Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Lovely Bones by Alice Seabold. So I will read you the blurb and share a few thoughts, and then I'm going to jump in and look at my flags here. Biggie, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You can't take him anywhere. <laughs> so the blurb. Oh, and this is a huge blurb. Okay. My name was Salmon, like the fish. First name, Susie. I was 14 when I was murdered on December 6th, 1973. My murderer was a man from our neighbourhood. My mother liked his border flowers, and my father talked to him once about fertiliser. This is Susie Salmon speaking from heaven, which looks a lot like a school playground, with a good kind of swing sets, counsellors to help newcomers adjust, and friends to room with. Everything Susie wants appears as soon as she thinks of it, except the one thing she wants most, to be back with the people she loved on earth. Watching from her place in heaven, Susie sees her happy suburban family devastated by her death, isolated even from one another as they each try to cope with their terrible loss alone. Over the years, her friends and siblings grow up, fall in love, do all the things she never had the chance to do herself. But life is not quite finished with Susie yet. So, this has kind of been described variously as like a thriller and as like literary fiction. I don't know if it's really either of those. It was certainly quite, I thought it felt quite slow paced. Um, and also because you know the solution to the murder throughout, so there's not really anything to to keep you going to find out what happens if that makes sense. I'll give this my rating now, why not? I gave this a three out of five. It was it was on par for like a fairly average 3.5 out of five throughout and then the ending happened and I just didn't like the ending. But um, we'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna go through and uh, look at some of the tabs. So it was quite a cool opening line though. Uh, my name was Salmon, like the fish, first name Susie. I was 14 when I was murdered on December 6, 1973. In newspaper photos of missing girls from the 70s, most looked like me. White girls with mousy brown hair. This was before kids of all races and genders started appearing on milk cartons or in the Daily Mail. It was still back when people believed things like that didn't happen. Also, that wound me up right at the start because we've got the, the Daily... Or in the Daily Mail. I don't know, is she talking about the newspaper? Or the letters she gets each day? Because I don't... Do, do people get letters about missing kids? But then, I mean, this is set in the 70s and it's lowercase, so she can't be talking about the newspaper, unless that's a typo on the very first page on the first paragraph, I don't know. All right, then we have another little girl in heaven who, uh, who's chosen the name Holly. Uh, she said she picked the name from a movie, Breakfast at Tiffany's. But I'm like, that is, I don't know if Holly Golightly is the right role model for a teenage girl, or for anyone really, but. And then we get a reference here to uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. There are a lot of like references to different books in this. In fact, I think that's what mostly what my tabs are. I thought this bit was quite interesting. Um, but again, I'm not, I just didn't really like the narrative style of this one, unfortunately. But it would be some time before I realised what you've undoubtedly already assumed. That I wasn't the first girl he'd killed. I hadn't actually assumed that. But he knew to remove my body from the field. He knew to watch the weather and to kill during an arc of light to heavy precipitation because that would rob the police of evidence. But he was not as fastidious as the police like to think. He forgot my elbow, he used a cloth sack for a bloody body, and if someone, anyone, had been watching, maybe they would have thought it strange to see their neighbour walk a property line that was a tight fit, even for children who liked to pretend the warring hedges were a hideout. Oh, we had a reference to, uh, like, corporal punishment as well, like, kids getting beat at school. I mean, this is 1973, I don't... I would have thought it would have been illegal by then. Then the school has a competition on how to commit the perfect murder. I think it's the school. All the kids were getting involved anyway, and I was like, that's a bit of a weird topic for a school to have, especially when one of the pupils has been murdered. And they changed it at the last minute to be about that as well, because it was going to be about something else. Then we have a moment where Grandma Lynn says, someone is smoking. They're foreign cigarettes, my mother said. Let's go find them. And I just, that pulled me out of the story as well, because, I mean, I smoke, and I can't tell different brands from the smell of different smoke or anything. Even in like a blind test of actually smoking them, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. There's a line here, uh, I thought of what my mother had always said about a boy at our bus stop who was twice as old as us but still in the second grade. He doesn't know his own strength, so you need to be careful around him. I mean, that does seem a little bit similar to that advice of like telling women like not to wear provocative clothing so they don't get raped, but... Also, that reminded me of uh, Lenny. Lenny, no, George. Fr whichever one. The, 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 the soft one. Soft. From Of Mice and Men. We have uh, Buckley goes to school and he comes back from second grade with a story he's written. Once upon a time there was a kid named Billy. He liked to explore. 
You saw a hole and went inside, but he never came out. The end. It's like a haunting reference to, to Susie Salmon's death. Have a reference to Virginia Woolf. It all seemed so wonderful back then. Filmy and romantic. Stones in the pocket walk into the waves. I don't think there's anything romantic about suicide. And then we sort of, as it said in the blurb, we progress sort of further and further into the future. So uh, we have here, as they're all a little bit older, it was better to look like you were doing something when you stared into the distance, Ruth had learned. Otherwise, it was likely that strange men would come over and try to talk to you. That is very true. I mean, and I don't think that only affects women as well. Like, on the bus, strange men used to come and sit by me. And in pubs, I'm just trying to mind my own business. So that's why I normally read. But then they come over and, like, ask why you're reading. And it's like, because I enjoy reading. And then it all just gets a bit weird. And she's sort of coming back from, from heaven and, and whatnot. So, yeah, here we have... She's, it, she's inhabited the body of her friend to have sex with the boy that she was in love with as a teenager, except she only kissed him once, I think. I tried to speak. Don't, Ray said. What happened? I died, I wanted to tell him. How do you say I died and now I'm back among the living? Yeah, and then they go on and have a bit of bit of jiggy-jiggy. Oh, that's right, and then he's calling her by her... Oh, it was just really weird. That made me really uncomfortable to read that. So that dropped my enjoyment of it down a little further, because it, it was it was okay until the ending. So it was on like a 3.5 out of 5, but that ending for me dropped it down to like a 3 out of 5. Again, I, I think I said in my wrap-up uh, video that, like I don't, this is classified as like literary fiction and a thriller, and I didn't really see it as either of them because it was just quite slow. It was more like a quasi-religious small town drama, I guess. So yeah, I gave it a 3 out of 5. Um, and. I probably won't read anything else by Alice Seabold, unfortunately. But I read it, so there is that. So we have it. That's what I thought of the Lovely Bones. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought. If you read this book, hit you hit the like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.